Do you have a CPU in your PC right now that's a couple of generations old and you're considering upgrading it just because it's not quite, you know, it's not it's not a six core or an eight core like a lot of the newer CPUs that are available, even on the budget side, and you're thinking, should I upgrade? Well, in this video, we're gonna run through the cost of upgrading, at least at the current time and mostly UK pricing, but feel free to check out the links in the description if you fancy picking any of the parts up. And we're also gonna talk through the performance differences, both in the real world gaming applications and in some synthetic tests and things like encoding as well. Now, the chip that I have here, the, the one in this PC that is my old chip is the 4790K. Now that's not the oldest chip that, you know, the mo majority of people are using. I know that a lot of people are still on Sandy and Ivy Bridge, but unfortunately this is the only chip, uh, the kind of the oldest chip that is most common that I have access to right now. So that is what we're gonna go with. Now the chip the chips that I'm gonna be comparing to are the 2700X Ryzen chip and the Intel 8700K. Now, while there may be some new Intel chips on the horizon, these are the ones that are out right now, and they're kind of the flagships, considering that obviously the 4790K was the flagship of its time, so we're going to compare those and see how it, well, ends up. So first off, I want to talk about the cost to upgrade. If you want to switch out your 4790K for a new chip, of course, something like the 4790K or basically anything older than that, we're all running on DDR3 RAM, which means not only a new chip, but a new motherboard and new RAM as well. That ends up costing you a fair bit. The chips themselves, the 2700X is selling for about 300 pounds at the time of filming, uh, with the, uh, a decent motherboard for it coming in at about 130 pounds, that's an X471. You can pick up some better deals and you could go with B350 if you wanted to, but for the time being, let's assume that you're going with a new platform, new chip kind of thing, uh, as well as 150 pounds for 16 gigs of RAM. If you wanted the 8700K, that one's selling for about 330 pounds with a motherboard that's probably going to run you about 150 pounds and again that 150 for RAM so for the total for the 2700X you're looking at 580 pounds and with the 8700K you're looking at 630 so not a cheap upgrade. So let's say you did make that around about 600 pound purchase for the new you know setup and you want to know how well it performs and what the difference is well first of all let's take a look at the Cinebench numbers as you can see there really isn't a massive difference here in the single threaded kind of workloads it really hasn't changed that much but when you look at multi-threaded this is where it gets kind of crazy you're looking at a literal doubling of performance here going from around about the 900 point mark even with an overclock on the 4790k to the 2700x being fully double even the overclock result so very very impressive on that front now i did also run 3d mark fire strike and uh, asus real bench in full and i'll include a link to the uh, my website titanmgb.co.uk where you can check out the full list of all of the results that I collected for this video but for the time being let's take a look at just the encoding benchmark from Asus RealBench. As you can see here again we're looking at a doubling of performance. The A700K actually gave a 67% performance improvement as well again even over the overclocked results for the 4790K so you can really see where those extra cores come in handy. When looking at gaming though of course this is a bit of a narrow test as I've only got GTA 5 and Dirt Rally numbers here but they're fairly common games at least on the GTA side and they do a pretty good job of showing at very least DirectX 11 performance and as you can see we're looking at a maximum difference of 10% you're really not seeing a, a big jump here and the, the important thing to note here is that all of those results they're all really very playable. Obviously this is with a GTX 1080 and uh, ultra settings for uh, Dot Rally and very high settings for GTA 5, but uh, you know, a, a very playable, very quality driven settings. Okay, only at 1080p, but still very impressive. And especially as you go up in the resolutions, you're seeing diminishing returns on higher end CPUs anyway. So uh, you're really gonna have a great time on any of these chips just specifically for gaming. Now, of course you could make the point that with DirectX 12 and Vulkan games, you're likely going to see a little bit better of a performance improvement with the newer, more cored chips, but there really isn't that many titles right now, so I would revisit this when there are a good number of DirectX 12 titles, especially ones that I have access to. So to clarify, for gaming, I would say that it's not worth it for you. Even the older chips are still performing really well, and of course, if you can overclock them and keep them you know, stable and, and happy there, then you're going to have a great time still just with gaming gaming even at 1080p. 
But as I mentioned, with that encoding result, if you're looking to do extra work, if you're you know looking to do things like video editing, for example, then the higher core chips, especially those new Ryzen chips, the, the 2700, uh, 2700X, even the 2600s are fantastic chips and provide some excellent value for money, even when you have to pick up the, the newer platform and the newer RAM as well. So if you're interested in that sort of video editing or uh, you know any sort of non-gaming but still intensive task, things like 3D modeling and rendering for, for that as well, uh, I think you're going to have a great experience with some newer chips. I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments down below. Do you have an older chip and you're thinking about upgrading? Or are you now completely dissuaded from upgrading after seeing this video? Let me know in the comments down below. I would love to hear from you. Of course, if you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments down below as well and I'll try and get back to you as soon as I can. And of course, being part of the community, if you see a question that is unanswered, feel free to answer it if you can. Um, otherwise, I would mention, if you want to check out the parts that I've uh, mentioned, at least the 2700X and the 8700K and some RAM and motherboards, in, uh, check out the links in the description down below as that will take you to your local Amazon store and you can see uh, those available for you. You can also check out the other links in the description down below, including Patreon to support me directly. You can also check out the Amazon and Overclockers UK affiliate links. So when shopping from those places, you can use that link and uh, you know, really help me out. So I'd really appreciate that. You can also check out the other videos. If you're new to the channel, make sure you hit that subscribe button for more videos like this one and plenty others. And uh, yeah, otherwise, thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed it and we'll see you all in the next video.